the church. the grave worthy is the king who was slain worthy is the king who conquers so worthy worthy is the land who was slain worthy is the king who conquers the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquers This is amazing This is our family
you, Lord, that we can just exalt you this evening, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are present here tonight, that we can sense your presence and feel your presence here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the honor to, to exalt thee, to worship you, because you are the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the all powerful, mighty God. And Lord, we worship you, we honor you, we praise you, Lord, because you are powerful, Lord. And let's just, let's just exalt this name and just, just sing that song just once more. I, I exalt me. creator of the universe. Such a privilege and honor to serve you. Let's give God a praise offering. Let's worship him tonight for he is king of kings and lord of lords, the great God who created everything. And that powerful, awesome God actually, you know, this week I realized God who created the whole entire universe interferes in my life and I love it. <laughs> And I can see his handprints and his footprints all over my life. And I know that he, he knows us. He knows us intimately. And sometimes even if we feel far, far away from him, he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. He's close to all of us. And even the times when he thinks we're the furthest away from him, he's the closest to us. And he will never leave us no matter who you are. He created you. He's your creator. And he loves you unconditionally and he values you because you are specially handmade by God. Amen. Let's give God a praise offering as we sit, sit down tonight and we worship him. Amen. Well, I'm going to quickly do a few announcements because we want to get into the word and I would encourage those who were here this morning to listen to the message again and those who missed the message from this morning please go on to youtube clear ministries and listen to the message from pastor jess a powerful powerful word of god and how we got to listen to the right words because sometimes we we hear the wrong words and it shapes our lives in the wrong direction so please listen to the message from this morning it was awesome there will be no young ads tomorrow night but they will continue the week afterwards um, so anybody want to get involved in Young Ads, contact Joey or Hannah. Um, youth, they've got their third night, which is Youth Alive this Friday. So if you want to get to know what is going on with youth, um, if you're online and you want to know, speak to our youth pastors, contact the church, or speak to any youth, youth kids here today. You've got some youth leaders here. If you want to get involved in youth, um, they're going to have an awesome Friday this Friday. Keeney, speak to Henry and Kath. If you're 55 and older and you're keen for life and you like to evangelize and go out and change the world, <laughs> our 55 and older to eternity <laughs> are amazing. They do outreaches on the different beaches, so speak to them. If you want to study the Word of God, speak to Trent. He's going to, he does foundations, a good um, eight-week study 
intense study of the Bible, and sometimes we just need to redo that. Um, clear Man, we've got our Clear Man camp coming up. Um, it's free, it's for all men, and um, even bring friends along. They're going to have lots of fun. They're going to be fishing and hiking and riding bicycles, but they're also going to spend time in the presence of God. So be prepared to change and come to give. You know, it's always an opportunity to give and to sow into other men's lives. So, and also get to know other guys. And um, so the nice thing about it, it's for free. It's all sponsored by the church. And so just make sure you go online and book for it so that we can know how many is coming. But the guys are very excited about it and they are going to really enjoy it. Bill always does the announcement, say, ho, ho, for the men. <laughs> I can't do it that well, but <laughs> ho, ho, for the men. <laughs> ho. <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> we had lots of fun yesterday on our Christmas in July. We had lots of fun, and, and um, I'll be putting that on Facebook soon so you can just see what we were up to. But um, yes, we had lots of fun, and Bill did, could do a little chicken dance there. <laughs> So you almost start seeing bull dance like a, like a chicken dance, <laughs> but it was really cute. And um, yeah, we had lots of fun yesterday. So life group, no life group this week, but next week we'll continue with our life groups. If you live in any of those areas, you can join one of our amazing life groups. They have really lots of fun. We visit them um, in different, different weeks, so it depends on which one you are. Um, me and Bull move around to all of them. And um, that is all from me. <laughs> I'm going to invite Pastor Bill, my husband, and he's got an awesome message from the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. One, two. Should be on. One, two. Yep, we're good. Great. Praise God. Just pulled it off. Great. So good. Oh, we're going to jump straight into the Word of God. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Most of all, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight, Lord. And I just want to openly declare, Lord, that I do not trust in my own ability, but I trust in you, Lord. I trust, Holy Spirit, that you'll bring a message to each and every person here tonight, Lord, that you may strengthen them, that you may transform them, but most of all, Lord, that they may be anchored in who you are and your ways and uh, that you have a plan for them, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm excited uh, about this message because you know that we've been speaking over the last couple of weeks um, about God, His character, and obviously how we fit into all of that. And last week we spoke about grace, amazing grace, and what, how powerful grace is. But you know, grace is there for when things are going pear-shaped, things are going not that great. And um, you know, we always might, we might come to the conclusion that God is saying to us, um, well, you're on your own until you've basically got something going wrong, and then I'll be there for you. But that's not actually how God works. Now, God is an amazing God, and what He does, He actually equips us to be able to circumvent the disasters when we can. He doesn't just say, well, you're on your own, and yeah, we'll just see how you fare. No, no, He gives us the tools. He gives us the tools. And that's what I want to talk about, one of the tools that He gives us, which is very, very important. And some of us might not think this is very important, but it is important. So I'm talking about wisdom. Wisdom. Now, the wisdom is not that, is spoken about very much. It should be spoken about more because it has value. It has value. And that's the amazing thing about wisdom. Wisdom is there given to us so that we can understand the deeper things of God. God wants us to understand it because there's value. There's value. And if you read in Colossians chapter, 20, uh, sorry, chapter 2 verse 20, um, Paul writes to the Colossians and he actually talks a, a little bit about it. He says, therefore, if... You died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. Why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to its regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern the things which perish 
with the using. According to the commandments and the doctrines of men. You know, we are, we are so quick to formulate things as human beings. We're so quick to, to put some sort of structure about something where God is actually actively involved. And I've thought about it when I first got saved. Everybody that was around me tried to turn the things that God was doing into formulas. And I saw that God just didn't do the same thing twice. He just didn't do it over and over again because we would take it and we would formalize it. We'd put it into a formula because that's our nature. But God doesn't want to be seen as part of a formula. Now, he wants to be seen as God. So he doesn't say that we should do that. It's the doctrines of men. But he says then in verse 23, it says, These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body. But, but, there's always a but, hey? But are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. The indulgence of the flesh. It has no value. In other words, it has a deceptive nature. When we formulate things and we do things according to man's way, they have no value. But if you do things according to God's way, then they have great value. You know that that indulge, there's a, the root word there is plethro. It actually means to satisfy or gratify the flesh. Now, when we're walking, we're doing things in this world, you're never going to satisfy the flesh. You're never going to. As much as we want to, you know, you can be in a position where you don't have a car, and you want a car, and you want it desperately. Listen, when you get a car, you're going to want a nicer looking car. Then you're going to want a fast car or a bigger car and a car that tows a, a boat or a caravan. And then you want a caravan and a pool. And a, you just never satisfy the flesh because that's the nature of the flesh. But what he's saying is that there is a principle that is at work within the world that never, never achieves what it's supposed to achieve. It's all deception. It's all deception. It's an appearance of wisdom. Our biggest struggle is in the flesh. So therefore, how valuable is wisdom? Not man's wisdom, but God's wisdom. There has to be value in wisdom. Because wisdom allows us to think, speak, and act in a way that pleases God. Proverbs 2 verse 1 says this, and Solomon was an amazing man, very wise man. But he says this, if you read this, the Proverbs, we were in Proverbs this morning. If you read Proverbs, the majority of Proverbs is all about wisdom. Right thinking. He says in chapter 2 verse 1, it says, my son, and it's not, listen, he's talking about my son, but don't, if you're a lady, you, you're included in this. In fact, you can put your name here. You can put your name here. Bill, Bill, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry out aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver, something of value, Something of value. And he says, if you search for it as hidden treasure, then, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Then you will start realigning your life in honor of God. Your whole life will take a different course. And you will find the knowledge of God. Not the knowledge of man. Not the knowledge of a university, not the knowledge of a curriculum. No, no, you're going to find the knowledge of God. 
That's powerful. Verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. See, wisdom of God comes from God. The Lord gives wisdom. And from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And I love this verse 7. It says, He, God, holds success in store for the upright. And He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly. You see, when we start to walk in the fear of God and in the knowledge and the understanding of God, we line up our lives so that our end destination is walking upright. And if we're walking upright and we're walking in, in, a, in a blameless way, He holds the success for us. He holds the shield for us, for the protection for us. But we've got to do it His way. Why? Verse 8 says, For He guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. See, God holds you and I in his hand. He holds us, be quiet, because we have faith in him. We have trust in him. We've put our lives in his, in his hands. See, wisdom places us in that position. The day that you gave your life to Christ, you made a wise choice to align your life with the way he wants. To mean to make God or make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior means to acknowledge that your ways were wrong and his ways are better. You know that Solomon was the wisest man, ever to, well, just about the wisest man to ever walk the planet. But you know that he wasn't always the wisest. He wasn't always the wisest. There was a time that he wasn't considered to be the wisest person around. Scholars reckon that um, Solomon came to be the ruler of, of Israel when he was about 20 years old. How many of you are, are 20 years old? <laughs> Sherry, I'll, I'll give you that. There's no 20. Okay, let's make it a ball between 18 and 23. If you put in that character. Yeah, we've got a couple of people here. That's interesting. Think about it. In your present time, right now, in your age, if you think we made you Prime Minister of Australia, that's it. You get the can, you get to... Hold the shield. You get to walk with it. It's now your responsibility. Are you going to say, Woohoo, I'm, I'm glad I got this. Now it's going to be a great, great opportunity. I mean, you're going you're to rule a country. You're going to rule a nation. You might be good at it for a day. You might be good at it for a week. <laughs> but what about a month or one year? Wow, what pressure, what weight you would carry in responsibility. At 20 years old, Solomon, when he was put into that position, felt the weight of that responsibility. And he could have asked for anything, anything. And one day God appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Solomon, what do you want? You're young, you've just been made king, what do you want? And his answer was, I'm not wise. I've just been given all these people. I'm young, I'm young, I'm, I'm but a, a spring chicken. And I'm carrying all this weight. I need wisdom. I need wisdom. Not my wisdom, not the world's wisdom. I need God's wisdom. And God said, because you asked for that, I'll give you that and more. And from that day, Solomon became the wisest man that ever lived. Why? Because the wisdom from God was poured out in his life. Very, very powerful. Listen, God gives us, church, the opportunity to gain wisdom. Not man's wisdom, God's wisdom. Because he desires it for our lives. And that's huge. That's huge. 
God has called us to have wisdom. And that's why Solomon wrote so much about wisdom. You go read uh, Proverbs. It starts off with telling you about what wisdom is and you better get it. You better wear it. Because wisdom guards the course of our lives. It determines our destination. And then through the process, God protects our heart. He protects who we are. He watches over us to achieve that journey. That's God's mandate. Proverbs 14 says this, verse 8, it says, The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. To give thought to their ways. But folly, sorry, but the folly of fools is deception. Deception. See, if we're not going to walk in the ways of God, we're going to live a life that's full of deception. We're going to deceive ourselves. We're going to, we're going to think we're on a great road. We're going to think we're achieving. We're going to think that we look good in the eyes of other people. But actually, down the road, the end of that road, there's destruction. And God is saying, hey, don't go there. Don't go there. Proverbs 5.22 says this, The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast, for they lack, for the lack of discipline, they will die. That die is not necessarily a physical death, but a spiritual one. Led astray by their own great folly. See, a lack of discipline and folly go hand in hand. If we're not doing it God's way, we're doing it according to the flesh. We need wisdom. We need to value wisdom. We need to find wisdom. Paul writes to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 20. And he says this. He says, where is the wise person? He's talking about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and those who hold up the law, those who find themselves, because they carry the responsibility of governing the, the people of Israel. And he's saying, where are they? What have they achieved? How great are they? Where are the wise people? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of the sage? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know Him. See, if you're going to walk according to the world, you're going to miss what God's got for you. You're going to miss it. No, we need to have wisdom. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth, but God. Don't you love it? There's that but again. It's always but God. But God. When God has something to do with it, let me tell you, it will transform your life. If you will let him. But God. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly things of the world to despise the things, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one would boast before him. He said, God just, his wisdom is so much wiser than ours. And what he does, he takes us out of the picture so that we can't stand before him and say, hey, I'm the champion. No, no, we will all stand before God and say, he's the champion. He's the champion of champions. He's the great I am. Your effort and my effort means nothing to God. But if we're allowing Him to work in our lives, we will see the success. We will see the victory. We will overcome. And then at times we will see we bypass the things that we were going to end up in. Where we would have needed the grace. Where we would have needed Him to rescue us. 
He gives us the ability sometimes to circumvent the valley instead of going through the valley. Verse 30, it says, it's because of him, because of God, that you are in Christ. There's that grace that we were talking about last week. It's not because of who we are, not because of how clever we were. It's because of God that we're in Christ, who has become for us wisdom from God. This is the amazing thing. You know, we, we need to look for wisdom, but it's right before us. It's Christ Jesus. He is our wisdom. He is our knowledge and understanding. If we can take hold of Him, if we can anchor our lives in Him, He's become for us the wisdom of God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. I love that because if you look at that, wisdom doesn't just consist of, about on how I perceive wisdom. I think wisdom, in my own strength, my own understanding, I think wisdom is making right choices, being clever, being, being able to think with your brain. No, no. Wisdom is being able to outwork what God calls us to be. That's the wisdom. And you don't have to be intelligent. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to be fast. You just have to know the King of Kings. You just have to know Him. You just have to be anchored in who He is. And therefore, as it is written, let no one boast. It said, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. That's what we're about. We're about talking about how good He is, how amazing He is. It's because of Christ that we are where we are and who we are. It's because of what He's doing in our lives. These three aspects of of God working in our lives are very, very important because that's true wisdom. It's wisdom to have righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Now, we know that salvation comes through Jesus Christ, and that's our redemption. As Christians, we know that because we've given our life to Christ. We've come to no the knowledge and the understanding of, of salvation. But what about holiness and righteousness? Well, first of all, holiness is very an interesting subject. It's a huge subject. But I'll just run through a particular scripture because I believe that it says it in a nutshell. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9, it says, Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us. Us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems unpleasant at the time, but painful. But later, later in life, down the road, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. See, if we allow God to work in our lives, if we allow God to, to have control, how work and, and, and operate through us, we will see the fruit down the line. We will see our lives transform. We will see a shift in the way we do things. We will see a shift in the way that we think. And with that comes wisdom. And therefore, he says, Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees, Make level your paths, the paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Because without holiness, you just won't see the Lord. Now we need it. And there is wisdom. There's wisdom, church. And obviously righteousness is as it is. It comes through Christ. It's not our righteousness, it's His righteousness. Christ died so that we can become the righteousness of Christ. He made a pathway through it. But we've got to invest in it. We've got to, we've got to commit ourselves to it. We've got to desire it. We've got to look for it. See, that's what wisdom is all about. It's about making sure that you understand the value of wisdom. Because if you understand it, you will pursue it. You will desire it. You will long for it. Matthew 5.20 says this. 
For I tell you, unless your righteousness supersedes or surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And you and I know that our righteousness is nowhere near where it should be. But if we take on Christ and He becomes our righteousness, then He qualifies us. We don't qualify ourselves, but He qualifies us for us. But you know, do we need to be plugged in? We need to be plugged in. It's not just a given that we have this righteousness from God. It's not just a given that we've got this wisdom from God. No, we need to be connected. And I'll give you an example. How many of you enjoy our summers? We've got fantastic summers in, in Cairns. It's scorching hot. Humid. Everybody that I know would say, wow, summer's coming. Oh, man. We, you see, they get all, all itchy. Why? Because summer is not that great. But we've actually developed something in our lives that makes our lives easier. It's called an air conditioner. And, you know, you walk into someone's house and you see this air conditioner parked on the wall. And you look at it and say, oh, that's a beautiful air conditioner. It's wonderful. But you know, if it's not plugged in, you might as well take it and throw it on the dump because nobody's going to come back the next year and say, well, that's a great air conditioner. No, it's got to be plugged in. It's got to be connected. It's got to be working for it to actually be of benefit. And the same thing with wisdom. Unless it's plugged in to the source, it's meaningless. It's pointless. And God wants us to be plugged in. I'm going to ask the band to come up. Now, we need, we need to be plugged into the source of life. An aircon is only as, as good as it's plugged in if it's got power flowing through it. And same with our wisdom. We need to have the power of God flowing through us. John 15 verse 4, Jesus said these words, Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Cannot bear fruit by itself. Listen, the righteousness, the redemption, and, the, and the, the holiness comes from God. If we're not plugged in, we're not going to see that evident in our lives. If we're not plugged in, if we're not abiding in the vine, we're not going to see the fruit coming in our lives. He says, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, much fruit. You will see the wisdom in your life. You will see the righteousness and the holiness and the redemption if you remain abiding in him. For without me, that's Jesus Christ, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them out into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so you are my disciples. Listen, if we're going to if we're going to walk in the wisdom of God, we need to be connected. Then the world out there is going to be able to say, hey, there's something different about you. There's something different about you. Because it actually flows through us. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. It's the righteousness of God. It's the holiness of God. It's actually Christ in us that they are seeing. Because He's become our wisdom. Verse 9 says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you. Don't you love it that God desires for His joy not your joy, His joy 
to abide in your life, to be found in your life, to be active in your life. And how many of us want to want to live a life full of joy? Well, you've got to have wisdom. You've got to be abiding in Him. You've got to be connected to Him. And then He desires and He says that your joy may be full. See, it's not only, God is not only happy that you have joy and have His joy, but that it may be overflowing in your life. And that's powerful. That's beautiful. It all comes from wisdom, making right choices, doing things the way God wants us to do. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand. Praise God. We're going to continue worshiping. We'll close the service at, at uh, 7. Praise God.
Lifted up in our lives, Lord. Be exalted, Jesus. For you alone, Lord, are our wisdom, our righteousness, and holiness and redemption, Lord. You are the very life that we have, Lord. Be lifted up high. Be lifted up high. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody just to bow your heads and if you're a Christian, you can pray. I believe God is working on the hearts of people. Tonight we've been speaking about wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. It's it's not worldly wisdom, but it's the wisdom of God, the ability to make right choices. That wisdom can only come from God when He gives it. And this evening, I want to give you an opportunity. Everybody here, if you've never made a decision in your life to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, tonight is the night. Tonight, the Word of God says, today is the day of salvation. Don't let this day pass you by without making a quality decision in making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through Him. Because there's nobody else that paid the price for sin. The Word of God says this, that the wages of sin is death. But Christ gave His life. He laid down His life so that whoever would believe on Him would have eternal life. 
If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior tonight, is that opportunity. Just raise your hand and say, Pastor Bill, please pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to make Him Lord. I want to live a life with wisdom. I want to live a life fearing God. I want to live a life that will exalt Him. If that's you, just raise your hand. For those who are watching online, let's just pray this prayer, church. Just pray this prayer. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung on a cross in my place where I should have been because of my sin. I thank you that you paid the price on my behalf and set me free. I ask that you forgive me of all of my sin. Come and live on the inside of me and be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you're online, if you've given your life to Christ, if you've made that decision, we'd love to hear from you. We'd certainly love to walk with this journey with you. Come and get online, get on our website, and write to us and tell us about this experience that you had. Amen. Listen, I'm going to open up the front here for anybody who wants prayer. Listen, God is able to heal, set free, and provide. If you need prayer, please come forward. We'd love to pray for you. I'm closing this service. Um, you're more than welcome to go home. Or you're more than welcome to have some fellowship. We're going to continue to worship. If anybody's being prayed for, just respect that the Spirit of God is moving in their lives. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for every single person here tonight, Lord. Father, I thank you that this word has gone out. And I ask, Lord God, that you would anchor in wisdom in their lives, Lord. That they make uh, choices not according to the world, but according to the flesh, Lord. But according to your wisdom, according to your power, according to your knowledge and understanding. I thank you, Lord God, that you do a mighty work in everyone's life, Lord. And as they go out there, Lord, that you would cause your face to shine upon them and give them peace. And bless them and camp your angels about them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bless you all. If you need prayer, please come forward. Amen. Otherwise, have an amazing, amazing uh, week. For those who are up from Melbourne, bless you guys on your trip back. Be safe and uh, we're praying for you guys and appreciate you coming and visit us. Have a, have a wonderful holiday. Bless you all.